So this is our first film of the second year we do this little uh, serious pattern of the month. And today I'm gonna start, I'm gonna tie a spring ply, but I'm gonna start to talk a little bit about what is uh, like the center of our fly tying and that's the fits tubing. And our fits tubing comes in four different diameters. And we have 12 colors, could have been more, but uh, 12 colors and they come in the extra small, the small, medium and large. And why do four? Um, there's a long story behind this, but the, the thing is, I tie mostly on the medium where the extra small fits inside. So one tube can attach the hook and one tube to attach the cone to get the balance. It's the same with the large and the small and these come together. The most important thing to, be, to have a fly that will be really, really strong is to work with a flexible system. And another thing that's really important is to have a cone that is tight onto the, oops, uh, tight onto the tube. So it's not, it cannot start to move because if the metal starts to move like this, can you imagine how much power it is when you cast your fly back and forth? The cone will move. If it's not super tight here, uh, and I hate to do this actually, but I'm going to take one of our competitors or one of the ones that's been copying uh, our system where it's super easy to get the, uh, the cone on. It just slides on, but you can see how it is. Whoop, it, it skips back and forth because it's not tight. And this will make the cone move to break the tube. And sooner or later you will have a fly without a cone, an unbalanced fly that won't fish the right way. I actually hate to take our competitors stuff and show you, but we had quite a few questions on why is it so tight and how does it, uh, uh, does it uh, work to get the cone onto the tube in an easy way. And especially on our cones that have uh, the fluorescent paint on them. We have four, we have the phosphor and we have a chartreuse, uh, yellow and the orange one. And here there's a bit of paint inside the hole, which makes it maybe even tighter. So how do we do it? I'll show you uh, the, the, take a little longer piece here, because this might be like this, that it's tight. Now this is, it's slipping on, slipping on, but it can be tight. And the thing to do is on the extra small is to cut a little edge like this. And this one will slip through the cone a lot easier and you will get piece coming out where you can pull it and pull the cone onto the extra small. My, my best buddy Håkan Oling been tying with, with my cones uh, or, and my, my tubing system for what, since the early eighties, but he uses the small one. I don't, I use a small, uh, an extra small and a medium most of the time if I want a really big fly or a heavy fly I will use the large and small but he does it like this and this shows how good and how flexible this is if you just take a little plier and you pull it out you will take down the diameter and then anything will slip on and even though the the cone is made to fit the extra small, you can easy pull it on to the medium. 
too slippery here, but you can pull it on to the, to the small, sorry. And this will be even tighter. It won't move at all. And how to do this if you want to attach a small one onto a, a medium tube? That's also possible. You do the same thing. You just pull out the, the tubing. You slide down the medium. And you take the, 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 the small one and you pull it in. And this way, I should have cut this before. This way you can also use the uh, small onto the medium. Just make sure you pull in the small into the medium and you will have something that is a bit trickier to tie with, but extremely, extremely strong. And the reason I wanted to show you this is that uh, that we those people that think that oh the hole is so small I can't get the tube through. Uh, I'll show you that you, you do it with the you cut it. This had this really small hole, a lot of paint inside, and I take this and I pull it on easy like that or even with the one with paint, I can do it the way I showed you. I can take this and I can pull it out, get a smaller diameter, and I can take the cone with the tiny little hole and put it on to the small one and pull it down. And it will be very, very strong like this. So this is the idea behind having a small hole uh, uh, to make a very tight combination here that will make a super, super strong fly. For those of you who haven't seen, uh, I made a little collection, we call it my summer flies, my little book here. And uh, today, I'm gonna do another spring fly. I, as I told you, I'm gonna tie a fly I call in flames. And the book is made the way that you can put it on the table like this. So if I'm not sure, now I've tied so many of those, so I know it, but I can put it there uh, and it's right in front of me. But okay, so I take that away. It's gonna fall down. Uh, spring fly. I'm gonna tie a big fly and it's gonna be a really really super bright fly and uh, uh, this pattern in flames it's a good rock band by the way but it started by a fly that I called flumflugan the flooded fly that was very very hot orange fly and it is converted into having a little bit of a back and uh, a little bit of black hackle in front to get a little more contrast into the fly. So, and I'm gonna tie this the way I fish most of my, my flies today actually. I'm gonna tie it on TTT or BTT where I fish a loose body in front of a, a, a tube that will open up and create a, a broad profile. And uh, let's do it on the largest um, uh, TTT. And I used the fluorescent um, orange one. And of course, orange fly, orange light there, right? And I start by just melting a little edge onto this magenta one. Uh, this is what I'm gonna Slip the cone into and the tube into. Now you can see how this is a little tight. If it's too tight here, I just cut it on a little more edge so I can get it through the way that I can take my plier or my fingers and just pull it down. And it's the same here. It needs to be tight to make a strong fly. I don't need to have all that plastic it's better to do it like this and I put it on and this is gonna be tied 
in uh, like two steps where I do the actual fly and the wing and the hackles and then I do the body to be connected afterwards and I show you when I tie this how I connect this because I've, we had quite a few questions on that okay so today I'm going to tie with the 12 uh, I'm going to tie with a fluorescent orange thread today and uh, if you do it all correctly the thread is not seen through the materials but I try to uh, tie with the thread that even if the fly is 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 being heavily worn that you don't see a different color of the thread to the through the fly it's better I think to do it like this and I'm going to start with a hackle and uh, and I'm going to do a soft hackle today and it's like I said in the last um, the film last month that when you fish a fly in the spring and you fish a fly very deep down there is very little current the more motion you can get to the fly the better it is so I start with a, a soft tackle where I normally uh, maybe or most of the time do a regular hackle but today I'm gonna do a soft tackle and I uh, cut it off and you know I use this little triangle that I tie in and then I wind it on just by pulling my fingers back and doubling this hackle and you can see how super soft it is and it's quite a big size feather because it's going to be quite a big fly here tie that in and the thing when you tie on TTTs and BTTs is to make them really strong is to get all the material to be tied in on the actual metal part of the fly then it only move down your thread at the end of the of the fly okay so I divide this a little bit and I just tie it down and I work my thread back just a little bit and you can see already how much motion I get in this fly okay so on most flies I use our Angel AHD in the bottom under the wing today I'm gonna use our flash uh, this is gonna be a, a fly with with a lot of of uh, uh, color and a lot of or not a lot but more flash than normal and uh, when it comes to our flash it's it's quite soft but the thing is you have to look at this and it's full of these small white strands and when you make this flash to make it really really soft they cannot produce it without putting in these small white uh, strands and I, I take those out if I, if I do that I will get a fly that uh, um, a flash that is extremely mobile so it's a bit of untangling here before I can really tie it in maybe not you don't think this is necessary and maybe it isn't but I'm super picky on how the flies will swim so I prefer to do this put them in quite short make sure they spread Oop. put the thread on top one or two turns and double back Walk the, move the thread back make sure they are tied in wide spread and don't cut taper quite short not longer than to the hook because the flash will have a tendency to to tangle with the hook otherwise and I put a little bit of uh, I wet this just a little bit like this for the next fly so they don't disappear okay and then I do um, uh, a wing where I start with uh, uh, an orange one a bright 
orange color and the first wing should be the heaviest wing uh, and I work my uh, hair through my brush and I take the hair and I brush it through like this uh, to untangle and take away bad fibers. Move my fingers up a little bit and taper it a little bit before I tie it in. About half the length or a little more uh, than the ready fly. And I tie this in and I can use quite a bit of tying thread here. I don't have to be scared to put too much on. And I cut every, in between every material I tie in. So I make sure to keep this clean all the time and look at the taper all the time, see what you're doing so you create a fly that will move the right way. Okay, time for the next one and I will uh, put a bit of uh, angel hair in between here on the super big ones you can actually use the angel hair HD too and our hot orange in flames um, Angel Hair and HD Angel Hair got these really strong fluorescent strands which is really suitable for a fly with uh, that you need or you want to be seen even if they in the murkiest water. So I do this and I go back double and go back and I taper the same way as before. Make sure I don't have too many too long strands. Then I put on the second part of the wing, which is also orange. And here I'm going to use a little less material, a little longer strands. Uh, and I uh, treat it the same way. Use the brush. Brush it through a few times. Look at the wing, make sure it's wide like this and also move your fingers up, see that it's tapered. So you have few uh, fibers that will create a nice taper and a good swing, swim. Longer, wide, about one and a half centimeter, not one and a half, but half a centimeter move your thread, move your thread back towards the TTT and uh, cut off. And on a fly like this where I like, like it to have a bit more sparkle, look at this how it's thin enough here, a bit more sparkle. I even put on uh, some uh, more angel hair and I'm gonna do a bit of our Alta Gold color. This is actually uh, one of my favorite colors. It's a really dark gold color. And oh, sorry, I took the HD. That was not what I wanted. I want this, the thinner one. Angel or HD was actually one of my own ideas. I wanted to have something in between flash and angel hair and it turned out to be what we call angel or HD. Okay, I do this a few strands, put them in, make sure to spread them, tie them in and double back. Have a little strand underneath there that want to mix and maybe I take that guy away and make sure that it's clean here okay look at the wing make sure it's wide make sure I have the right uh, tapering and then even though this is uh, this is not meant to be a dark fly. I put a little bit of black here. And when it comes to this um, in flames pattern, I do it two different ways. Some of them I tie in 
with a bit of magenta in the wing first and then the black on top but just because uh, I do this all the time I wanted to show you how you can do uh, it a bit different so I start with the black brush through and make sure you don't have too much now because as I said this is supposed to be um, a fly with a lot of, of uh, color to it look at it a little bit too much put it in wide make sure these strands are very long to add to the tapering and tie it in looks good and cut it off I do some of those with um, with peacock and everything but this I'm gonna do as I said a bit different look at this and now feel it and make sure you have that long tapered uh, wing with a few strands here because that's really essential for how the fly will swim then I'm gonna add another wing on top and this is to add color but also to add to the volume of the front part of the fly to get that heavy drop form where the fly is really heavy this is uh, this is our um, uh, our biggest ttt or biggest cone that will open up to for a fly to be approximately one centimeter wide and uh, i can add some soft material here that will uh, add as i said color but also uh, some volume to the fly i do the same here i brush this and uh, it's not going to be very much uh, but it's going to be strong color a really strong hot color uh, i use the magenta and i put it on and i make sure these are about half the length of the wing this means that the tapering is already done but I'm just adding volume to the to the fly. Here I I normally don't wet my flies too much when I tie them but this is good to get these strands down a bit uh, when I tie and make sure that they uh, are as long and as bulky as I want them. Okay, now I can, if I want, and those of you who've seen our, or have our pickup uh, our packs, can we have two different uh, magentas. We have one that's bleached and one natural. And here on this, sometimes I take some of these uh, bleached ones and I put them with a little bit of nasty rusty on top. But I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just going to tie this as a plain hair wing and um, when you fish deep down it's also good to have a few flies that are a bit faster to tie uh, because there's always a risk you're going to lose a lot of flies and when you fish deep if you don't lose flies you're not fishing deep enough so um, I'm going to skip that on this one and I'm going to take a couple of jungle corks and um, I'll say the same as I've done with all the films we, do, we have done that if you use the original feathers make sure I have my certificate here to do it with the situs and and don't don't use wild birds please okay so I'll take this and uh, now I want the jungle cock to form and you see this is straight it's quite nicely curved that way but I wanted to curve the other way and I just pull it over my thumbnail like this and if I pull it a few times like this I can actually mechanically form this feather to follow the wing and since I'm gonna have quite a bit of hackles I'm gonna tie this in long strip off a bit tie it in make sure it's almost like half the length of the wing 
and I always start my side even if I'm on the dark side of the moon here I don't see much here I complain every film but you have all the light I do that and then I do take the other one I curve it the same way make sure it it can follow the wing in in a nice way strip and uh, normally I turn this but now I just have to look from above to get uh, the right length so they are even look from the front see that they will follow each other and uh, it came a little bit too much on top I'll pull it down a little bit and um, that looks better to me one or two turns of thread and we are done and as you see I I cut away uh, one each I don't tie in both and then cut it's better to try to cut all the time follow the fly see that we have the right proportions okay so on a TTT I'd like to have it uh, soft and bulky and a lot of motion and I have the thing that will open up behind the wing it doesn't matter because it will create the turbulence anyway and I will then use uh, two let's see which one we're gonna take I'm gonna use two uh, soft tackles and uh, I want to have a fairly big one this was extremely soft should I take that okay let's do this then and I do a uh, magenta one. This is where I add a little bit more color to, uh, to the fly, except of the orange, like the flooded fly. It was, uh, it was only orange to start with, but I actually fish this more now. And I create a little triangle and it can be quite tricky to tie in and to wind on these super, super soft tackles. And here I take a little super glue and I change this, use support, and I change this from being the weakest part to be the strongest part of the fly. Be a little careful. And when you tie with a super soft tackle like this, actually it's better to give the glue a minute or so I'm not gonna sit there and talk a minute but so the glow glue uh, goes down it's easier for you to not have these soft fibers to mix in the glue and then I just double back this and I tie them in and it's gonna be two turns if you want to do two or three, it depends on the feather too. This was super, super soft and the two will be enough for me. And I tie it in and you can see how I'm still on the metal part. I'm, I haven't moved my thread down yet onto the extra small plastic. Can untangle this a little bit here. I see it's uh, it's so soft this will of course get untangled when when you put it in the water but it's it's nicer to work with the uh, the nice looking fly when you tie okay now I can I'm gonna put a little black on and uh, first of all you have to be careful and and I use you can I use soft tackles or I use schlappen feathers and I'm gonna or I sometimes use ostrich too, but I'm gonna use a schlappen today. And when I do it, I I deal with it in a little bit different way because I want I don't want too much black, meaning that I look at the feather and I make sure that I um, pull away the fibers on one side of the feather. 
and this means that I, I can tie in fewer fibers but I get them even. It's harder to get uh, it even by only putting on one turn. Here I can do two or three turns and it will be even. And I tie it in, move my thread down to the extra small and I wind this on. And now I don't have to double this, I just put it on. And I'll do one or two turns onto the metal part and then I move down the feather ah, it's crossing over uh, uh, I move down the feather down to the extra small and put the last turn onto there come on now trying to do this a bit even like that and I tie it in few turns this was a uh, feather that didn't really want to do it my way so I'll have to untangle a bit here look at it so I get a little bit of black just coming over the strong colors in the rest of the fly and I cut it off and then I put on a cone and on this I use um, different cones. Sometimes I even put the fluorescent orange one on, but most of the time from the start I, I, I used the gold one, then I turn over to the copper one. And now I use what's my favorite color. Uh, it's the, see where they are, they're too much stuff uh, Organizers, very, very good. Wrong one though. No, oh, here, it was there. I'll uh, do, uh, orange metallic one and here I can I can do if I wanted to want the fly to be fairly fat I can use the extra small but I can also use the micro one uh, and uh, since this is a, what is it a 12 uh, 12 centimeter fly I can put on the extra small one and actually I don't understand why not using a cone here because the cone will put a little glue away from the thread there the cone will protect the thread and make it a lot stronger fly i take the material away and i pick up some glue with the with the thread and then i take this and it you can see there's some extra glue I take the glue and i turn the uh, cone on to the to the fly tight and that way I spread the glue and I press it down like that. Ready? Did it turn out good? On my side it's good. Uh, take the fly out of the vise. Use support and cut it about three millimeters and my Lighter is there. Hold it up and melt it down slowly. A little bit at a time. Make sure this opens up nicely and it comes down tight to the cone. And this way, uh, doing this now, let it dry a bit. This way, the cone is tight. The, the, the tubing is tight to the, to the TTT. It's tight to the cone. It means I'm going to get a really, really strong fly. Okay, in flames. You like it? Oh, look at this. Here's one. It's too long. But uh, it turned out okay. And when it comes to fishing TTTs and BTTs, I always carry two wallets, one with TTTs and one with BTTs and I can just change to get the light and the heavy fly and as I said before, I use more of the light flies fishing deep than the heavy flies. The heavy flies are more for the faster water or the place where it's hard to really get your fly down. 
then it can add a little bit of depth. In flames. Looks nice to me. Okay, so now we'll see uh, if we can tie a body to this. A loose body that you can change. Um, this fly you can fish with a black body if you want. You can fish it with a silver or you can fish the one I'm gonna uh, tie now, which is the one I fish is mostly. Okay, this is uh, not gonna be uh, that different from what I've done before. I use my little tube cutter here to cut a uh, length of body and then I cut a little angle in the top. You can do this, easily do this um, uh, body without a cone in the front, but I'm gonna do one with the cone just to show you uh, this. And that means I attach these two to each other without glue now, like I talked to, to you before, I told you before, is that if I can have a flexible fly, it will be stronger. And this way I just put a little bit of, of um, thread there and I move my thread back I take a mirage tinsel and I tie in the mirage and I do it underneath and uh, using the orange thread I could go back with the thread under the mirage I normally don't do that I back down the mirage over the tubing turn it and uh, tie it in and the mirage is quite fragile so if you want you can tie a lit put on a little bit of super glue under the mirage okay and then i'm going to use uh two r braids and i'm using our hollow braids today and uh, i take a silver and i go with an orange one um, and you know those of you who who seen me tie before knows that i use the same material for ribbing and and uh uh, putting a, uh, and creating a body but I always here tie in the one that I'm gonna use for ribbing first so I don't have to cross over uh, with the body material and on the bodies I use on my TTTs and BTTs most of the time I do them without the tail I have enough uh, color to this without having to add the fluorescence and then I, I tie this in and I overlap it make sure it grows to make it tapered tinsel body and I tie it in underneath cut it off not too close let it be able to slip a bit I then do uh, dub dubbing and I'm uh, using glitz and those of you who watch me tie see that I use a lot of glitz even on the smaller fly I prefer glitz because not the tiny flies but I prefer glitz because I have the possibility to brush it out and I always dub without any wax and I put this on back and forth make sure that I'm uh, overdressing this a bit because otherwise it will look too skinny after I brushed it and you can see the very strong fluorescent parts of the glitz how it and when I brush this out it's gonna it's gonna be a really strong part that is fluorescent on this fly and the fly is, is uh, a fly I most of the time fish uh, when there's a quite a bit of color to the water actually um, which is mostly the case in the spring where you have a flood and the snow needs to go away but you can see how easy it is you just spin it on and uh, do it one uh, one um, direction all the time so you don't spin your 
fat fibers, uh, fingers back and forth like this, do it the same way, then you it's easier to do a, a good body and to make the material stay. Okay, so then I'll take a body hackle. I choose one with uh, what I think is the right length of fibers. This is actually the same cape I tied with last time and uh, it's pretty useless because it's so very very thick here meaning that I have to be a bit violent when I tie it in and I make sure I tie this in right in front of the medium on the extra small and uh, since this is so thick I will need to uh, be uh, put on a bit more thread. You can see I even need a bit more thread here. It wants to slip. And uh, then I take this and I uh, put it on and I start by one turn that I normally do. But here on the loose bodies, I, I normally do two turns before I start to take my hackle down the body like this and I tie it in really really strong uh, with my fingers and then I take the silver braid hollow braid and I cross over the other way and on a big body like this I don't need to spin it so hard and I as you can see I'm pulling I'm holding it and I'm pulling it down really hard into the dubbing tie it in. If I want it extra strong, I double back again. And cut off. And take this off. Then it's time for the magic brush. I said it's the meanest brush on the market. And if you've done this right, you can put this under a bit of torture. Pull out the fibers. Let the not really velcro it's a stronger material but let them take the fibers and pull them out to mix together with the with the hackle meaning I get I get a lot of uh, volume and I get a lot of reflection and I get a very translucent fly which I think it's it's important okay I do a micro turbo in front bit of glue, put the glue a bit away from the body, pick it up a little bit, take this and twist it on to spread the glue tight down, cut it off at the device, about three mil use support I put the scissor on my finger like I do a lot and then I cut it's easier for me to see that I get it um, where I cut it where I want to and I melt it down and this way now uh, this part is going to sometimes I can use uh, the needle to open it up this was it was open but it was not uh, that uh, open that I wanted it and if I open it this up a bit uh, here we go it's gonna be easier to attach it to the fly okay so how do I put this together then I get some questions on how I how I attach things and you can do this in a bit you can do it different way let's say this is now going to my uh to my leader and i put on the fly first make sure i put the leader through the hole then let's see where it is and then i take the body and i take the put the body through and uh, take a golden hook here 
uh, and I get questions on what hooks I use and I still fish my sailors. Uh, I fish both singles, doubles and trebles. Uh, I think that the barb do more dif uh, no harm to the fish than, than uh, if it's a double or a treble. It's my personal thinking. Uh, and uh, on some places where we fish almost only catch and release, I will uh, press in the barb. And uh, uh, where we uh, take some fish or where it's legal to take some fish, I can leave the barbs on the, because the barbs on the uh, sailors are micro barbs, very, very small. Okay, so look at this. This is how it is now. That was a useless knot. Luckily, I'm not going to fish it. And what I do is that I take this and I attach the hook. And this is one of the good things with the fits tubing also that it's super flexible because it just slides in. It, uh, a medium fits can take a quite big hook. And then this is the way I fish it. So this is now sliding down onto the uh, body. And here I can decide how long the body, where I want to have the, the hook. When I fish sea trite, I want the hook further back. They will come in and take the fly from behind. A salmon will take most of the time from the side, meaning I want the hook to be in the center. But this is now sliding like this. And uh, I can choose either to fish a dress body like this, or I can just, if I want it to be a bit less bulky, I can fish uh, just a bear tube like this. And I can change colors. And like I said, I fish on a system with three different wallets. VTTs, TTTs and loose bodies. And in flames. The way I prefer to fish it like this. I think it turned out to be a fairly good fly. A uh, lot of colors, a little bit back, and a lot of volume, a really wide fly with a lot of motion to it with all the hackles here. And uh, <laughs> I've been thinking of uh, giving you a little sneak peek, ending this little film. I've been showing you the tools here before they're on the market. The cutters are still not here. Um, you have the leather stuff with the with this table cover we have and the other things I showed you in the film before. Today I'm going to show you uh, something really interesting and that is that we are now launching our reels. And um, I have three, this is, uh, I have to clean up a little bit here. Uh, this is a project that I've been working with a couple of years now together with uh, one of the best reel makers in the world. We uh, do a series, a small series of on only 100 reels and uh, it's a classic reel uh, and uh, I really like them. We have a drop form, a little adjustment here. I tested and fished those for two years now and I'm really happy with the way they turn out. We do, uh, the series consists of three reels and we do two 200 reels and one single handed reel. They all come in these, what I think, fantastic block, block leather cases. And we have the single handed reel that is a uh, salmon reel still uh, for an eight or nine weight, seven, eight, nine weight. And uh, they all, they have this uh, sealed system, all of them, and uh, they all have the drop formed little adjustment. And um, since I like classic design, I, we made it with uh, 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 brass and black and silver, and uh, I'm really happy with those. And as I said, we only do 100 of them, and I've been fishing them now first sample two years ago and, and all of last season, really happy with the way they performed. And uh, we do 100 and they're all numbered 
and just me showing them um, made made us. We have bookings on on what I was going to say all of them, but not not all of them, but many of them. We have a few series left. If you're interested, drop me a mail, and I'll see if I can find you your number that you would like to have on the wheel. Really big one for the big rod, 15, 16, 17 footer, or whatever you fish. A medium sized one for like a 13 or 14 footer, uh, and a smaller one for the switch and single handed rods. And uh, I'm really, I'm proud to do this, but it's been a really funny project for me to finally do a real yes the way I wanted it. So, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll go back on the M and we end up with a little scenery from the opening fishing this year. Thank you.